As promised, today I'm sharing with you why I decided to buy this 50 watt Chinese laser off of eBay rather than my original intention, which was to get a Glowforge Basic. Right off the bat, I wanna tell you that I am not a Glowforge hater and that I think there are a lot of happy Glowforge owners out there that are making some incredible stuff. And that for some of you, the Glowforge actually will be the better option. But I'm gonna walk through some of the steps and thought processes I really would have found helpful when I was going through my process of trying to decide on which laser to buy. So let's go ahead and hop on onto the computer where I'm gonna show you some charts so that you can decide for yourself whether or not this 50 watt Chinese laser is for you or whether or not to go with the Glowforge. Before we get into this, make sure you check out my other video and see my breakdown of costs for my 50 watt. But this is a comparison chart that I'm gonna be using to really see which one is the better option between the eBay 50 watt Chinese laser and the Glowforge Basic. Now, some of you might be wondering why I'm comparing the Glowforge Basic to the 50 watt. Wouldn't it be a better comparison to go head to head with the K40, which is a 40 watt system that you can get for about $350, $400. And then with any upgrades or additions, it's gonna cost you around $500, $600. And the reason why I decided to go ahead and compare between the 50 watt and the Glowforge Basic is because the 50 watt actually comes with a 40 watt tube in it, which is gonna be comparable to the Glowforge Basic. And the cost comparison is gonna be a little bit more in line between the two of these because the K40 is so much cheaper. But that is one of the considerations that you might want to think about is whether or not to get the K40 because that's gonna be under $1,000. Now the first category I think is probably one of the more important ones for most of us and that is the cost. So right off the bat, you're gonna be able to get the 50 watt for about $1,500, maybe closer to $1,600 with shipping if you're gonna opt for the shipping. Now shipping is gonna be free if you're able to go and pick up your crate at the warehouse that they bring into your city. But I'm gonna assume like myself that most of you won't be able to pick that up and you're gonna to need to pay the $150 for the liftgate service to bring it to your house. Now the Glowforge Basic, even though it's a smaller machine, shipping is pretty expensive at $250. Just buying the laser and incorporating shipping, the 50 watt is almost half of the cost of the Glowforge Basic. So price wise, the 50 watt is definitely winning out here. Now the exhaust system that I built, again, check out my video that I posted before, uh, cost me $275. It might be cheaper for others of you to be able to have a less lengthy or complicated exhaust system. But regardless, what I'm showing here is whatever you're gonna pay for your eBay purchase is gonna be the same for your Glowforge Basic. Next, I did have to purchase the software, which is Lightburn, as well as a camera, and that cost me $163. So that's an extra expense, whereas the Glowforge Basic does come with a camera, and I'm assuming all of the software is included. So you're not gonna have any additional costs to run the Glowforge. And then I paid another miscellaneous $155 in expenses, and this included the milliamp meter, USB cord, another lens for the laser, tools to set up, a table that I made. So just various other things that I needed in order to get my laser up and running. And now we see that the cost comparison is bringing the eBay laser more to $2,000. So right now it is two thirds the cost of the Glowforge Basic. Now the thing that the Glowforge Basic does not have, and I don't know if the pro version is able to do this, but the Glowforge Basic cannot do cups. So my eBay laser did have the rotary included. I do know that some Glowforge owners did cut out the bottom of their machines in order to incorporate a rotary, but out of the box, you're not gonna be able to fit a rotary inside of the Glowforge Basic. And then finally, with my machine, I upgraded from what came as a 40 watt tube to a 60 watt system. So that's a 50% increase in power. And that cost me $385. That is with a $130 credit that I did receive from the seller because my machine did arrive with a broken tube. And because of that, I decided to upgrade to 60 watt. So that was an additional almost $400 in expenses. Without the credit, it would have been $500. But what you can see here is even with that upgrade, it's still gonna be cheaper than the Glowforge Basic. So what this chart is showing you is that you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck by going with the Chinese laser that you're buying off of eBay, even if you're gonna upgrade it to a 60 watt system. So if you need more power, I think the eBay purchase is the way to go. 
I don't even know if you can upgrade the Glowforge Basic. When I was looking at their website, it looked like the Basic and the Plus comes with a 40 watt tube. And then the Pro version has only a 45 watt tube in it. And so I don't think that you can upgrade it beyond that. But if you guys own a Glowforge and you guys have upgraded, please put in the comments below. Whereas with the eBay purchase, they assume that you're gonna upgrade at some point, so they even provide a cutout on the side of the machine in order to put in the longer tube. So in terms of price comparison, and here I subtracted out the 60 watt upgrade because I think most people buying the 50 watt wouldn't choose to do that right away. Uh, you are paying about two thirds the cost of a Glowforge Basic. So you're gonna be able to save a lot more money by going with the eBay purchase. And this category is really what determined for me why I went this route rather than getting the Glowforge, which was what I was originally intending, is because I was getting a lot more machine for the money. Let's talk a little bit about the size of the machine. And I'm not talking about the printable size because both the Glowforge and the 50 watt has very similar print dimensions, which is 12 inches by 20 inches. And so it's pretty comparable. The Glowforge Basic is a slight bit smaller than that, but I think size uh, in terms of what you're able to laser is about the same. What I'm talking about is the size of the actual machine. The eBay machine is a lot bigger than the Basic, where we're talking about almost four feet wide, 26 inches deep and 22 inches tall. Whereas the Basic is 38 inches wide, 21 inches deep, and only eight inches tall. And that's why you can't do a rotary inside of the Glowforge Basic because it is so shallow, so short. So if size is a consideration in terms of where you're able to place your machine and you don't have that much space, the Basic might be the way to go. Or if you're gonna go with the Chinese option, the K40 is gonna be also a desktop machine. Okay, this next one, ease of use. Glowforge is going to win on this one by a long shot. So I know from their advertising, Glowforge boasts that you can have your machine unpacked and printing within 30 minutes. And there's no reason for me to not believe that claim. So I think it's gonna be usable right out of the box. You're not gonna to have to tweak it a lot in order to get it running. Whereas obviously with the Chinese machine, you're gonna to need to fiddle with it a lot to get it to where it's running well. For example, it took me over an hour to align my mirror so that the laser was hitting in the right spot. And also to tweak the machine in other areas it takes a while. Uh, even now, after having my machine for two weeks, I'm still fiddling around with trying to get my settings correct so that my engraving is within the lines that I'm cutting. So there's a lot of fiddling that you're gonna have to do. And the owner's manual that comes with the Chinese laser is useless. I didn't even bother reading that. What I used was YouTube videos and the support group on Facebook. And fortunately, there's enough support that you get all the information that you need in order to set it up. But it is not easy. The way that I like to compare it is I have a Creality Ender 5, which cost me about $350 and I have a Prusa MK3S. These are 3D printers, and the Prusa cost me $750, more than twice the cost of my Ender 5. Basically, the Prusa was print and play out of the box. Well, after I assembled it, uh, I was able to just print, no problems. It's required very little maintenance, and it was super easy to use, and so, I was paying that extra money for ease of use, whereas my Creality Ender 5 took a lot of fiddling. Again, I went on to YouTube to figure out how others made the quality of their prints better, and so I had to make modifications, all this other stuff. Now I saved a lot of money, but if ease of use is a high priority, then that money might be worth it. This next one is customer support, and right off the bat, you just need to know you're not gonna get any customer support with the Chinese laser. Having said that, there was no fuss in getting that $130 credit for that broken laser tube. And so working with that seller was actually pretty good. But in terms of troubleshooting your machine and all that kinds of stuff, there is no phone number that you can call to try to figure out how to troubleshoot your machine. You, it's entirely up to you to find out that information online. Now the Glowforge Basic, I would have assumed had better customer service because they have a phone number that you can call a Seattle-based company here in the United States. So I think it's better, 
but it's hard to say. I pulled up the Better Business Bureau for Glowforge and they have 30 complaints. Most of them are related to delivery issues, which I know from their Kickstarter, they did have issues with that. And a number of people were frustrated that it took so long for them to receive their machine. But the other thing that's interesting is they had more problems and complaints with their product or with the service. And so you can go ahead and go to this and read them yourselves in terms of what complaints that they had. You know, it's hard to say because most people will only file complaints. They're not going to put praises usually online. But just note that there are some pretty unhappy people with how Glowforge does business. This is sort of up to you. Would you rather have some customer service that might be iffy or none at all? Next category is marketing as well as connection. Obviously the Chinese laser is not marketed at all, but uh, Glowforge, I think a huge part of the profits that they are making off of these machines is going into marketing. Why do I say that? As soon as I started doing research and I went to their website, I started getting inundated with tons of marketing material from Glowforge. Basically, anytime I go to YouTube, nine out of 10 of the ads that pop up, the YouTube video is actually from Glowforge. So I've gotten to know their staff. I've gotten to know their testimonials from owners because I see their advertisement on YouTube all the time. So this is my original inquiry that I made to Glowforge, basically saying, hey, is there any partnership opportunities? and I'm willing to do a video review for your lasers. And here's my channel. And here's a response that I received from them. Hey, thanks for reaching out to Glowforge. Our current promo is free shipping on the Plus and the Pro, which wasn't the one I was even thinking about. It really didn't address at all any of the things that I asked. And then he followed up, apparently after having read it over a week later, actually addresses the fact that I might make tokens. And then he's trying to upsell me from the basic to the Pro. So the thing that this says to me is basically he didn't really read my email that seriously and didn't really even address the question that I had. And I'm perfectly fine with companies not collaborating with me. That's, that's totally up to them. So that's not a big deal. But this sort of leaves a bad taste in my mouth that they're not really even reading exactly what I am saying, but that they're interested really in selling and in sales. So that's the feeling I got from them. You might have a different experience, but it sort of left a bad taste in my mouth. And the fact that they keep emailing me, even after I made a decision, sort of drives me crazy. And how you connect to the machine actually is a complaint that I've heard from some Glowforge owners. Because with the Chinese machine and almost any other laser that you can buy, you can directly connect your machine to your computer. I connect mine through a USB cable. You can do it through ethernet cable. There's various ways to connect, but this is the weird thing about Glowforge. You can't connect directly to the machine. You have to have an internet connection in order to work with the machine. So without internet connection, you cannot do any lasering or engraving. And I think that's a little bit crazy and a miss on their part that they didn't make a direct connection to your potentially $6,000 machine. If internet is an issue for you or you don't want to work through the cloud, then you do not want to get a Glowforge. Now for me, I have pretty good internet. I, I haven't had issues. That wouldn't necessarily be a roadblock for me from getting a Glowforge, but for others of you, it might. Especially if you're running a business, you don't wanna be hampered in being able to make product because you lose internet connection. So for me, the highest priority was the cost and what I could get for my money. Also, I could accommodate the size of the machine in my basement and I don't mind tinkering or trying to fine tune the settings in my machine in order to get it working well. And I also like the fact that I upgraded and have 50% more power than the Glowforge Basic and still ended up with a cheaper machine. If you thought about 3D printing but was daunted by needing to tinker with a machine, then the avenue that you might wanna go is with Glowforge. But even there, what I wanna show you is that I would only consider getting the Glowforge Basic. See, I can't even get rid of this window here. At $2,500, the Glowforge Basic is pretty expensive, but I would consider it if I did not want to hassle with any of the settings or having a machine that works right out of the box. There are some other alternatives, but in general, I think it's a pretty good machine. 
but I would never get the Plus or the Pro because the Plus is $4,000 and then the Pro is $6,000. Because for those amounts of money, I would much rather get either this Boss LS1416, which will cost you about $4,000. Now the print size is pretty small on this, but you're getting a US-based company that's gonna provide really good customer service for you, probably better than Glowforge. And instead of the Pro, I will get the Thunder Laser Nova 24 for 6,600. It is more expensive than the Pro version, but you're getting a lot more machine for your money. And it's a 60 watt laser, including a water chiller. This is the machine I would actually get if I were to have a business or needed a machine that was more reliable and didn't need so much tweaking because these machines will work right out of the box and it has great customer support. Their mini over here is $4,500. So if you wanna spend a little bit more than the boss, it increases your bed size. But these machines are way better deals and you're gonna get better customer service, especially here in the United States than over the Glowforge. So pretty much in conclusion, it really depends on what your priorities are and what categories are the most important for you. So if price isn't your number one category, then obviously you might wanna go for ease of use or community support or whatever it may be. So it really depends on what your top priorities are. So I hope that you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe. Go ahead and check out my Patreon page to see what the GGGG is for this month. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.